five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett, it is the Ramble, and it is uh, yeah, Wednesday, and uh, we'll be here until midnight Eastern Time. Okay, let's do what we always like to do when we call our friend in Las Vegas. There we go. Mm-hmm. There, now it's going to ring. It's very strange with the sounds it goes through. Today I'm going to be talking through the whole conversation like beloved late character actor Ned Glass. <laughs> now the way everything sounds like a question when Ned talks. Maybe you remember me from the Yiddish Theater production off of Broadway of my Greek musical play, That's What You Say. Featuring this song, you tell me Liberace's not gay, and that's what you say, that's what you say. You tell me Mr. Bolton's first name isn't Ray, that's what you say today. That's about it. Is that it? <laughs> I, I, I'm <laughs> your, I wanted to talk like Ned Glass. Who's Ned? I can't, I can't envision Ned Glass. Who is Ned Glass? Oh, my. He, he was the candy store owner in West Side Story. Uh-huh. He was the landlord on the wonderful, unfunny sitcom from the 60s, Julia. Julia, I don't mind the colored nice living here. You play it right that time, but that old Jay Wagon Dog drives me crazy. I thought I knew every supporting actor alive, and somehow Ned Glass eluded me. Oh, he was in a million things. Uh, just look at it. Look up Ned Glass. You'll see his picture. And you're like, oh, that guy. He's one of those guys. Oh, it's that guy. He had one of those super Jewish, Larry Fine faces and demeanors and uh, a fine, fine, fine actor. Yeah. Okay. Well. He lost him in 1984. Oh, you, you really were a fan, weren't you? Oh, I'm, I'm the president of the, of the, the Vegas chapter of the Net Glass Fan Club. <laughs> we, believe, we believe Glass Radio will be coming back very shortly. Yeah, Net Glass. Oh, boy. So how you doing out there in Las good. Vegas? Huh? Good. Doing good. Staying in Vegas. I was in Reno the other week. We had fun with Carl Mo. Now I'm back and uh, just sitting around. I got nothing this week, nothing this month, so I'm just taking it easy. Carl Car loves having you work with him, doesn't he? That's fun to work with him. We both we believe he totally kicks ass. He's one of the funniest guys I've ever known on stage and off stage, and uh, it's fun to work with him. Explain, we, we give explain, him, we give him good energy. Explain Carl LeBeau to the audience. It's LeBeau, isn't it? The V. Yeah, L A B O V. It's like the word above with an L in front of it. Carl yeah. LeBeau. I think yeah. the V is silent, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, uh, but, but he's it, one of he, he was uh, he was he worked with Sam Kennison a lot way back in the day. Maybe you remember Sam Kennison, large. Ex preacher who screamed a lot and blah blah blah, and uh, he just was. I always thought Sam was great at the beginning, but I always thought the star showing on the wrong guy. It should have been Carl. He's one of the funniest comedians ever, and go see him whether I'm on the show or not. He's Carl Lebov was just about Sam's best friend, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Sam ended up screwing him up, but that's another story. Was but, he? Uh, was he with? Yes, was, yes, was, was he? Friend. Was he with him when he died? There was somebody with him. Yeah, I believe he was right in the car right behind him when uh, the crash happened. Wow. Wow. Yep, he saw it happen. He saw it happen. Supposedly, uh, when he was lying there and going south, as it were, uh-huh. um, he said, uh, supposedly Sam looked up and said, I understand, I understand. Something like something that. like that. That's what the story was. I, I heard the story. I heard the real story was Sam said, "Well, somebody could get me a band-aid, maybe." <laughs> so, because <laughs> I think he that glass showed him to heaven. So, no, uh, that they said that he said, "Why? Why now? I don't want to die. Why now?" Oh, okay, okay, okay. And he was like having a conversation with someone. And by the third, okay, he was on his way to the pearly gates. Wow. That's what they tell me. I was. I wasn't there. I don't know. You know, it, it's really strange. I always talk about Sam's death as being a perfect example of somebody dying from causes that you didn't think he would die from. 
You know, exactly. You, yeah, you, I thought he's OD or he deliberately drive his car to a tree you, or a club owner or something. You, well, you knew that he was maybe going to die of something drug related, but not that the drugs were going to be in somebody else's body. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I knew, you know, I knew he wasn't going to. I was. Uh, I was once at Sam's house and he was there and we were partying and Ali Joe Prater, I don't know if you remember him, he was there. Yeah. And I just said to myself, Ali Joe Prater and Sam will not be at the party welcoming in the year 2000. And boy, was I right. Yeah, but, but the funny part was, it, and people don't know about the death of Sam Kinison, he was driving to a gig in Vegas and a car sideswiped him and he killed him. Literally. That was, well, actually, he was, he was driving to Laughlin, Nevada and he was in Needles, California with some drunk 17-year-old kid and his passenger went into his lane. It was like it wasn't a divided highway. It was like one lane going this way, one lane going that way. And he swerved into Sam's lane and kept out. That was it, man. That was it. That was all she wrote. That was it. Cap is that quick. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, anyway, and uh, but you say that he was a good comedian in the beginning. Yeah. Explain yourself. Because he was hysterical at the beginning, and he took comedy where it had never been before, and he was like a, exciting, and he, he represented the times, everyone going crazy and rocking out and doing blow. It was the 80s, early 90s, and then after a couple of years of that, he just seemed to get too fucked up and be like a parody of himself. He could come on and say, oh, you want to party, fuck shit, piss, come oh, oh, I like to party, I like to do coke, I like to do coke. Oh, oh. It, was, it was like a sad redneck circus, you know. Do, do, you, think and, uh, he, do you think he got... Uh, got kind of eaten up by his own success in other words not, he, not, yeah he yeah he not, did. and, and i don't mean it in a, well you know i got all this money and fame now why should i work on my act when i can just get fucked up and scream oh, oh, yeah. well that and and the fact that you just lose all sense of perspective when when exactly. things really are fame going separates. good for you always and, remember that fame and, separates and at his so. t- in his time uh he was amazingly uh uh Successful, sure. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, he was he was a sort of a successful comedian. Yeah, even more than Robin. You thought Sam Kennison at the time because he was like really happening at the time. Yeah, and and uh, he, he he had this amazing success, and I liked Sam. I mean, Sam was yep. uh, I I knew Sam, and Sam did my show, and we, uh-huh. you know, he he asked me to do stuff for him, like introduce him at the uh, at the, uh, where do you call it the uh, where where was the place in the Civic Center we used to. Have shows. Oh God! Uh, the, uh, There's Civic. Uh, I don't remember. I think, I, I <laughs> think the Circle Star Theater. I don't know. Maybe it somewhere. was. Maybe it was the Civil Civic Center wow. Auditorium. Anyway, yeah, it's probably what it was called. And uh, he asked me to, you know, introduce him there. And you know, we had we had an ongoing relationship. And I liked Sam. And yeah. it was he was nice to me and good to me. And uh, he was good to a lot of people. You know, I yep. mean, you were part he of it. He was nice to me. He got me into the comedy store as a paid regular. He, put, he cornered Mitzi and made her watch me. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, in, in in your case, he was uh, a good friend, too. I, yeah, I always got along great with him. You know, I didn't get too close to him. I didn't, <laughs> if you got too close to him, he stepped in the circle of fire, you got burned. But I danced on the edge of the circle. But, no, he always got along great, and I always was invited to the parties and had a great time. And, yeah, he was a friend. So, yeah. Yeah, there uh, you go. what is that great story uh, that I keep reminding people of where he was uh, at the, uh, you know, the the comedy store run by Mitzi Shore up on uh, the hill had a house, right? That was kind yep, of like, hill, sure. and, and that's where, where they kind of, he, she kind of let the uh, comics crash if they had no place to crash, right? Yep, yeah. yep. And one of the people living there at the time was Mark Marin. Yep. And tell me if this story is true. He so hated Mark Marin that he went in one day and peed all over his bed. That's a true story. And not only that, but Mark came with a friend of his from New York. Uh, yeah, I think, I think he picked a friend of his up at the airport or something like that. And uh, the story is uh, that he went into Crest Hill and Sam greeted him. He said, hey, man, I just pissed all over your bed. What are you going to do about it? And Mark turned to his friend and said, see, I told you I knew him. <laughs> so he admitted to peeing on his bed. I mean, yeah, he, yeah, pee on your bed, man. Fuck you. Yeah, I told you I knew him. <laughs> but I hear, I hear, hear he hated Mark. He couldn't stand. I, I, yeah, I guess. Well, Sam was getting mad at a lot of people, so I don't know what the, what their beef was. But uh, you know, it, it wasn't my business. Well, I can see why. I was never that fond of uh, of him. Be honest. Of uh, Mark? Mark. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's, he's a nice guy. I don't know. I don't know what's around what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, boy, you're 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 copacetic. You like to like everybody. So anyway, yeah, I listen. try. I try to get along with everybody. If I don't like them, I just stay away from. Them. I talked to Bubbles yesterday about the closing of the punchline in San Francisco. Oh yeah, punchline's going away after forty-one years. Yeah, how do you feel about that? Ah, uh, all things. You know, I, I was, the whole scene there pretty much died at the end of the '80s. So it was nice that you know the club was still going on. It's a great club. It's a class joint. I always had fun playing there. Uh, especially when you made me a local star on three area codes, I would headline there. It was great. But as they say, all things must pass. I was, you know, when I was living there, I was playing there maybe twice a year for like a hundred dollars a night. So the, uh, but it shit happens. You know, the film Maurice was only over for three years. This place was over for 41. So, uh, that's it. So it comes and goes. I'm not going to say it was, it, was, it, was, it, change, you know? was it still doing okay business? Oh, you know, when we played there, we'd pack it in, you know, it was great. So yeah, I assume they were doing okay. So uh, I didn't go there often. So, uh, but when we played there, they, it was pretty full. Now, but, they, they still have know. they still have the one in Sacramento, right? Is the, I think so. I'm yeah. not sure. I looked it up. Well, it's still open. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I guess it's still there. <laughs> so there is still. You want to drive an hour and a half? Be my yeah. guess. Yeah, there still is a punchline. Well, the rumor that that uh, that um, the bowls uh, threw on me. Was that the, the they were they were going to renew their lease? Okay, for twenty three hundred dollars, twenty three thousand dollars a month. Okay, ouch. And well, ouch, but you know that's that's real estate in San Francisco. Yeah, sure. But they were going to renew it, and uh, they agreed to. And then about two months later, before they were supposed to, you know, sign the deal because it wasn't up until then. Uh, the, the, they were told, no, uh, we're not going to renew your lease. That's that's Yikes. essentially what happened. And yeah, the, I heard it's going to be turned uh, to a gym or something. Yeah, not, yeah the it, rumor they, is that the, the the building was bought by Google. Uh-huh. And Google is going to turn it into a gym for their little <laughs> for their little minions, which really pisses me off. Yeah, you know, well, because, the whole the whole techie thing has ruined the city. It's yeah, put a I mean, face I, w- on it. I wouldn't mind it if the if the punchline said, "Listen, uh, we're just not doing the business we used to do. Nice having been here. Goodbye." But this wasn't yeah. the reason they're closing down. Oh, they're closing it's down it's because of yeah, fucking because maybe fucking Google. And if I find that out, this show goes out over uh, YouTube, which is owned by mm-hmm. Google. I will stop. I will stop using YouTube, you know. Yeah. Uh, and and somebody said to me, well, that will that will get them, you know, kind of like a, sarcastically. And I said, listen, the punchline did more for my career and my life mm-hmm. than Google ever has. Yeah, that's true. You know, uh, Google doesn't do shit for me. They just give me yeah. a, an outlet, which they're by the way they're using my talent to. You know, so I, I exactly. you know, I really, I'm at a crossroads where I wonder what should I do about this? Should I, uh, yeah, hmm. you know, should I or shouldn't I? Uh, I don't know. And, I don't know what to, do, what to tell you, but uh, you know, I'm sorry the place is going, but uh, you know, it was a matter of time. Can't live for it. Well, forever. And look, hey, look, all things must pass. I think exactly. That, you know, and and it. it as life goes on, you begin to lose things that were comforting to you. Uh, yeah. I know that. I'm 79 years old, and I can't tell you how many people I know now who are not here any longer. Exactly. Or yeah, how, many business, how, thing, so. how many businesses don't exist any longer. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and so I'm not surprised. You know, I'm not surprised when I hear that somebody goes out of business. Uh, I've lived uh, long enough. I mean, the, what you do is you kind of deny your own age by going, why did it have to close down? Well, it was open for 41 fucking years. Exactly. Yeah, there's college playing there who weren't born when the place opened. You know, it's like you and me going to Roseland or whatever, you know. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, most of the kids who, who are uh, in San Francisco at Google aren't even 41. You know, so, I mean, that's a lot of time. But... To have it closed down because of this onslaught yeah, of, of, the, exactly. of the these tech companies. See, what happened, ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know, the tech companies were pretty well sequestered down in what we called Silicon Valley. That was in the South yeah. Bay of San Francisco. And all of a sudden, some of the people who worked there wanted to move to San Francisco. 
So, uh, so Google and uh, 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 who do you call it? Uh, 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 Twitter, for instance. You know where Twitter's building is? Me- uh, remember where the old Live 105 was? Yeah, sure. Where in that basement, almost the, the bottom floor there? Uh huh. Yeah. That, that oh was that was the furniture mart. That's now Twitter. Uh, yeah. Oh man. They, they couldn't be satisfied with staying in the South Bay. Part of the problem. No, was, they want everything. Those no, bastards. Here's what the problem was. A lot of their people started moving to San Francisco because it's more fun than living in the South Bay. And so exactly. then they had to travel to work every day. So what they did is they started <clears throat> having buses that would take them to work down in Silicon Valley. But uh-huh. then they decided, why should we pay for all these buses and all this transportation when we can actually put our stuff in San Francisco? So Google opened up in yep. San Francisco and Twitter opened up in San Francisco and all these other companies. And what it's turned this town into is a town which just didn't exist, okay? Yep. Because what happens, you get these people to come in from somewhere else mm-hmm. to a beautiful city that has defined itself, okay? And then they attempt to redefine it in their image. Yep. And the rents go up 7,000%. Yeah, but that's, that, that's the least of it. What gets robbed out of, out of a city like San Francisco is its uniqueness. Sure. And San Francisco had a very, you have to admit, had a very unique feeling, unlike any oh, other city. Oh, I loved city. it. It was my it, favorite city for a long, long time. Especially when I first moved there, it was very affordable. and was all kind of artistic well, it, oh, people for, there, and yeah. anybody could afford to live there, you know. And now, that's but, over. But it also had a flavor. The, the buildings had a flavor. Sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Big you time. weren't allowed to build a building taller than 20 stories. Uh-huh. In San Francisco, that was as a result of the earthquake. Well, today yep. you can, you, you know, you can't you can't even see the hills of San Francisco for the uh, uh, skyscrapers they put up. You yep. know, it's it's terrible what's happened to the city because it's lost its charm. Exactly. And and uh, it, it's as a result of these uh, these tech scum. From Silic- they sh- if they'd stayed in Silicon Valley, everything would have been fine. But they couldn't stay yep. there. It, it just wasn't. It wasn't big enough for them. No, nope, no. Nope. Yeah. The bacteria had to move to the main, no. the main, no. main vein yeah. there. So. Now, uh, now, I don't know that Google bought that building, and they're the ones that threw them out. Oh, but, uh-huh. but if if the rumor's running around, it's probably got to have some truth to it. Yeah. And and uh, it is just another example. Or how these companies are raping San Francisco, a city, exactly. yeah. a city yeah. where I was born, raised, left, because I, I was happy to leave home. Oh, great to leave that town behind me. And then I came back and realized all I had missed. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it, 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 yep. it, it's terrible. It's just terrible. It is. It is. I don't, you know, I don't really miss it with what it's become, and there's really not much of a comedy scene there anymore, except for a few places. But uh, you know, I'm, I don't see myself ever going back there, even if I came with the billions of dollars. Well, you know something? Yeah. You can't go back there. Because, can't go back home again. No, you can't go back because you can't afford to go back. Mm-mm. Because if, if you I could, I probably would. Because if you had a cheap apartment, let's let's say Bubbles left San Francisco tomorrow. He couldn't afford to come back because that apartment, no way. The, uh, he won't be able to get an apartment at that rate, okay? Exactly. The same thing is true of me in New York City. If we ever left this apartment, I don't think there's any way we could buy back into New York City. Oh, yes. They were, yeah, I tell Bubbles, you'd be a fool to move. You got a great place for rent control for a million years. Stay there until you die and then for another three months. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. I mean, but the, but that's the problem. You know, that that's the problem with most of these cities. The people who are in them can't afford to live in them. Exactly. You know, and New York City is a prime example of that. I mean, I, oh God. I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I, I know people who were, where I work, serious, who are maybe making $30,000 a year. Mm-hmm. How do you live on $30,000 a year in New York City? Oh, yeah, you know, you a got, week maybe. You got to live like a Mexican off a freeway for crying out loud. With Twenty <laughs> God, other yeah. people in the room with you, you know. Yep. And I say Mexican folks because in California there are these Mexicans who uh, are outside of uh, one of these stores, you know, these hardware stores and stuff, 
asking people, can I come home and do your lawn and things like that? And yeah, then they go, yeah. They go I've back, had a couple of help, help, they, help me move on occasion. They go back to an apartment where they live there with 10 other Mexicans Yeah. so that they can pay as little rent as possible so they can send that money back to their relatives in Mexico. Exactly, yeah. You know, uh, and uh, that's, of course, what Trump hates. The fact is these are hardworking people who aren't yeah. using any of the money for themselves but sending it back to their families. Exactly. But what I'm saying is, is that it's, that's the only way you could live in San Francisco now is for you to go back and live with ten other people in a in an exactly. apartment. Oh yeah, it's some crappy place, like in the heart of the Tenderloin too. It wouldn't even be a good place. But. Yeah, and I mean, <clears> no thank you, no thank you. I mean, we've had it. The rent ate us up. I, I should have come here ten years ago. I'm glad I came to Las Vegas. And it's very, it, you know, it's very uh, 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 expensive here in New York now. I mean, it's just oh, ridiculous, you know. Uh, I don't even leave the house because if I leave the house, I'm going to spend twenty dollars. Yeah, you know? I mean, uh, across the street, it costs me one hundred thirty-eight dollars. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a concrete tax, you know. So, <laughs> no, there's a, a moving your left foot and right foot tax, there's a gravity tax, there's a yeah. breathing tax. They got a, yeah. they got you covered. They screw you coming and going. So, what does a comedian do today? How do comedians start? I mean, you you've been doing it all these years, so I don't have to ask you how you start. If somebody were listen, if somebody were to ask me how do you start in radio, I couldn't tell them. <sighs> Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I would just, just say, don't find something else to do. It's not what it nope. used to be. And uh, if you have to, if you're that crazy, where you're gonna do it anyway, just go to any open mic you can. They got these like 5 p.m. open mics at laundromats and stuff. You perform in front of the washer, and if you get good enough, they promote you, and you get to perform in front of the dryer. Yeah, and yeah, right. you go, you go absolutely nowhere. <laughs> so if you want to do it, just do it anywhere you can, and uh, hope for the best. And you have to you have to want to really entertain and you have to hate money. You have to really despise money. Oh, I can't tell anybody how to how to start in radio because radio is different today. Oh, exactly. Yeah. There is no radio. In, in the no old days, really old days I would have told anymore. you go oh. find a little radio station in La, like the, my first radio station I worked at was in San Rafael and then I went my first full-time job was in in Reno, Nevada at some uh -huh. dumpy little station uh, called K Dot. And then, uh, uh, then I went to one other thing, another thing. But you know, <laughs> you worked your way back in, and yep. uh, that's how I tell people you start in radio today. You can't start that way. You go to that little station. Everything they're doing is is syndication. They don't need any announcers. Exactly. exactly. Yes, yeah, totally different. It's like so the music I, business. Uh, you know, that, get a band together in the old days. Hopefully, somebody see you, sign you. After you get real good. It's all different now. It's totally manufactured and I, dribble. I tell them go out and do a uh, do a podcast. But you know there are so many podcasts out there. Try getting over that noise. Exactly, you there's know. fifty zillion of them. So you got to get. You know, how do you separate yours from everyone else's? I don't know. So uh, you got to do that. Yeah, you know, my podcast doesn't really work as a podcast because I'm still doing radio. You know, and I'm yep, not doing yep. I'm not doing makeup hints for girls at last three minutes. <laughs> you know, and then I get uh, one million views. Right? Yeah, yep. I don't do that. Um, and what I do uh, doesn't it doesn't get that big an audience because it's too long form. So yep. you know, so so uh, I I don't know what to, how to tell people. There's no way to get into radio. There is no radio. Percent. There is no radio anymore. Exactly. I don't know. I don't know what the answer would be to that or comedy or whatever. You know, I didn't. It's a different vibe. Who cares anymore? I often I wonder. To do with it. I often wonder what it would be like to be um, put out to out to pasture. You know, where you, there was uh -huh. nothing for me to be able to do. Okay, <laughs> but the, but I've gotten to that. You know, I'm completely inconsequential in in the broadcasting business. Yeah. And when I was going strong, I was as good as they come, you know? Yep. Uh, but, you know, that strength I, I gets me nice little notes from people saying, oh, I remember you in San Francisco. I used to sit in your studio audience, you know. But it yeah. doesn't get me that many listeners or viewers to my podcast. So, I, yeah, I, yeah. you know, don't come to me for, for for advice on career because I don't know how those careers are made and how they're, exactly. you know, whatever. So you, you have the same thing with comedy. You can't tell somebody, hey, you know, first do, you know, as you say, do the do the washer, then do the dryer. Exactly. Uh, because <laughs> they, go to the washer, then go to the dryer, then uh, get unemployment. Who knows what, get them at the die and leave me alone. But those gigs don't even even exist anymore. You know, you don't no. have, have those those clubs. So, no, even like in San Francisco, there's a few places to go. But you remember how it was in the '80s, and with you, you know, on the air, and and uh, you start a lot of careers there, and everything, including mine. 
it was we had a major scene, and you go there now, you know, nobody's going to get famous there, or you know, make a living at it. On there. a Saturday night, I could go from one club to another, mm-hmm. and 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 by the end of the night, have only hit a minor amount of the clubs that were out there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And now it's, all the places. it's no. not like that now. There's three places where you'll see like amateurs and stuff and maybe a couple of good people, but it's nothing. Now I can, nothing like it was. That's over forever. Well, now I can go down to the, uh, I can go down to, uh, uh, the punchline and work out. Anyway. Yeah, you watch the bricks come down when the hey, crane listen, goes there with the let's, ball. Let's do this again in a couple of weeks, okay? You got it, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Pearl. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Thank you, Shea Stadium. Thank you, all 12 balconies that are full. Thank you. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Bop! There we go. There's uh, there's uh, Stephen Pearl. And uh, now let me uh, open up my uh, Skype. I didn't, I didn't open up my Skype. Why didn't I open up my Skype? Uh, because I didn't. Still working with the old machine, so I'll probably be out of sync tonight. Uh, they're supposedly repairing my machine now. It's I got a little thing I can go online and see how they're doing, and they said they're they're uh, uh, they're repairing it now. They were diagnosing it for three days, but now they're you know whatever. Anyway, let me turn on the uh, Skype here, and I. Uh, I was in contact with the Skype people today once again. Hold on. What, what, did that, what did that pen? Where did that pen fly from? That's weird. Anyway, let's see here. Uh, uh, I talked to the uh, people at Skype, or wrote them, or back and forth, and uh, they're, they're, they're checking into my whole complaint. I can't believe that other people haven't complained about the same thing. Or maybe they have, and uh, they just don't acknowledge it. Let's see here. Who's calling? Oh, here comes Charlie Wallace. Comes Hel- he- Hello, Charlie. How are you? Wait a minute. Uh, are, you, are you there, Charlie? Doing good. Okay, good, because I was getting um, double feedback there. Hold on a second. Let me just put you your picture in there. Well, why don't we just steer in the you're in the center already, just where you were last night, so we that can sounds- we can we can do that. Okay. And then the next person that calls, we can uh, uh, put in the uh, in the next spot. So anyway, how are you, Charlie? I'm doing good. Oh, we get more callers tonight than we got last night. Yeah, me too. That was strange. Otherwise, I'm going to sign out early tonight. I, you know. Yeah. Plus, I'm having imaginary chest pains tonight. Wow. No, I have. Um, Don't die on me. <laughs> No, I don't plan on it. I'm t- I'm trying to do tea tonight. Uh, you, you can't see it. it's tea, okay? Uh, but I have a cup of coffee over here waiting just in case, <laughs> because I'd like to get to bed at a reasonable hour tonight. You know. So anyway, so anyway, we'll wait and see if other people call. So um, uh, anyway, I got a hold of you know I I got so sick of ta- writing these people back. I talked about this last night at Skype that I finally wrote this guy back and said I'm sorry if I was a little short. Let me just give you the shorthand of the whole thing. And I did it complete with pictures and everything of, of the problem. Yeah. And the guy said, thank you. He says, I've passed this all on to the engineering department or the programmers at, uh, at uh, uh, people in programming at, at Skype. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll look into it and see what the problem is, you know. You know hopefully they'll fix it fast. Well, you know, they don't have – the thing is, there's no, uh, there's no Skype uh, uh, manual. Like yep. I didn't know when I when that those four things came up and that thing on the end that little gray thing was there that if I hit that I could add somebody to the group I never knew that ah uh-huh. you know they always said if you want to start a group uh, start a group and then you add people and you uh, you put people's names in there and you let them know to call the group and blah 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 and join the group no I just I I do this on the fly somebody calls I want to add them to the group and I said that was working. Until you guys upgraded, yes. And uh, uh, obviously, if all of a sudden the difference between then and now was the upgrade, there's something wrong with the upgrade. And the guy had a tendency to finally agree with me. So we'll see what happens. It's yeah, very, it's very frustrating. You know. Yes. No kidding. Everything's frustrating me lately. Am I am I just going crazy, or are things just 
Is everybody make your life tougher today? Seems like it. There's no customer service. Oh, oh, forget that. You know, uh, yesterday I was supposed to get a delivery, right? And yep. I, we, I get a thing on here from Amazon saying, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't get it to you because you weren't home. What do you mean I wasn't home? I never leave. You know, of course I was home, <laughs> you moron. Uh, uh, there we go. Now I got to call Ray Renati back. Here we go. Hold on a second. Uh, Ray Renati, add. Okay. And uh, I wonder if he's in a gym somewhere tonight. Um, <laughs> we'll have to see here. Hold on. Let me. Uh, 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 oh, and here comes Scott Boddicker. He wants to come on. Yeah. So, uh, w and then I have to call Scott Boddicker back. Hold on a second, uh, uh, Ray, and then I'll add All you. Right. To, I'll add Ray to the group any moment here. Let's see here. Uh, what is that? All that noise. What is what is all that noise? I don't know. It's like something rubbing a mic or something. Oh, sorry, sorry. That was just me moving my microphone. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. There he is. Okay, there. And uh, uh, Scott, are you calling in? Um, Got my camera on. Oh, there it goes. Oh, yep. Oh, oh, there, okay. There. okay, there we go. Okay. So I will then add Scott to the group here. There's Bod. Okay, and he's uh, added to the group, and there we go. We we have a little bit of a, a group going now, and we just lost Ray. You know. Uh, well, anyway, <laughs> anyway um, tonight is a uh, feel free night, by the way, uh, and and uh, that's why Scott is calling. Uh, and uh, my wife thought that was really funny too on your Facebook. Page. Yeah. Oh, that I said Scott and Tom, <laughs> you can call. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to read you something I got today. Uh, I got uh, as a result of that of that post, okay, that I put up there, that it was a feel free night, and that uh, you know Scott and Tom, you can call tonight, you know. And uh, this was from Alice Garten. Now, Alice, if you're listening, you'll probably never listen again because I'm going to tell you to go fuck yourself. Oh. Uh, here, here's what you wrote. You need 500 fill-free nights to reverse the damage done to GabNet, to your reputation, and to your legacy by that nincompoop who doesn't know when the <laughs> shit the fuck up. <laughs> with, it, with his uh, ma I love With his Mad like Men that. 1950s sensibility, archaic references, dumb humor, and passe terminology. Still calls women gals and even chicks, and at least two or three years ago, the last time I heard him. I bet you've heard him since then, okay? Otherwise, you might not know. He Maybe maybe he isn't on anymore. You wouldn't know, would you, uh, Alice? Says, what a pity uh, it is that all this time your panels have not had the participation of Tom Yamaguchi. What, Tom calls? And other people, in fact, he was on last Friday. Uh, and other people like Tom who would have made a creative and popular success of GabNet rather than what it has become by its having turned off or bored to death the large potential audience you never grew, you never grew due to the panel's poison pill, Phil. <laughs> wow. Burn, baby! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Alice, uh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> okay, and here's why I'm going to say that, Alice. Where to go, Alice? You know... I don't see you calling Alice and trying to add some in intelligence to the group. I don't see you trying to solve the problem by, by you know, putting in your two cents worth. Um, I just see you complaining. Uh, and um, uh, I'm not going to tell somebody they can't call this show. And I'm not going to tell, you know, sometimes, uh, I, sometimes I could live without Phil for a night or two, Right. Uh, it, it's always more difficult when he's around because sometimes he, he just, you know, doesn't shut up, okay? Yeah. But I'm not going to kick him off the show because, number one, I like Phil, all things aside. But also, I mean, I believe in the variety of opinion. And that's something that Alice doesn't like. What Alice wants is a nice, cozy show where she agrees with everybody. And I just don't think that's what I would want to have here. You know, it's not my it's not my idea of a good time. I don't know about the rest of you. Now, if you look here, 
There's some empty spots there for people, folks. If you want to join the join the party, I can fill you right in there. Okay. All right. Don't say Phil. Don't say Phil. Uh, but anyway, so I, so I, hopefully Skype will do something about this. Although who knows? Yeah. You know, it, it it's a pain in the ass. Uh, and I don't know how to how else to put it. We haven't heard from. Uh, let's see. We haven't heard from uh, Jeff this week. I wonder if he's okay. Oh. You know, Maybe he's on vacation. I don't know. Always when there are certain people that don't call, uh, who are normally always call almost every night, uh, I worry about them. You know, I know Renee doesn't call because she's, she, you know, whatever, but uh, James Lee hasn't called in a long time either. Maybe Hawaii disappeared. Maybe Hawaii's not there anymore. Uh, yeah, we don't yeah. know. Right. Could have been who wiped, would know? It could have been wiped off the face of the earth for all we know. Volcano could have ate them all. Yeah. Yeah, volcano. No, I haven't heard from her, and she's not on Facebook. You know, I've, I've tried to get a hold of her. In fact, I have her on my watch here for a thing called walkie-talkie. Oh, I see. See, where I could call using the walkie-talkie if she's got it, got it turned on. And she could answer. I tried it once. She didn't answer. But I don't know what, what's happened to her. I, she hasn't even posted on, on Facebook. That's no, not for a long time. Yeah. I didn't know that. I don't do Facebook. Hmm. My wife does. But I... Yeah, but, you know, I, will, I, 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 I don't check Facebook that much either, to be honest with you, except for my participation in it. But, uh, like, girlfriend will say, you see what I wrote on my Facebook page today? I don't know. I don't but occasionally, to find out how somebody's doing, I will go to Facebook. So, hey, I got great news. Um, you know, I uh, I have this tooth that's missing, yeah. and I had to figure out something to do with it. You know, and and uh, wads of gum don't work for very long. So, <laughs> not very long, no. Or uh, if I were back in San Francisco, I might get some sourdough French bread, roll it up and shove it up in there, you know. Um, and and, and it, it's not that it bothers me, but sometimes I notice its absence, okay? So uh, I, I went to this doctor to see what we could do about getting maybe a little clipper thing. And, and she said, we just don't do that anymore. She said, we haven't done that in 20 years. I said, well, I got a dentist across town who's been having me do it constantly whenever I had a tooth pulled and they were going to do an implant. And she said, well, we just don't do it because people swallow them and all kinds of things. So, so I said, you yeah. know, well, then uh, she said, well, we could do a bridge. I said, what's that? She said, well, we put a crown on either side of, your, of, your, of your, the hole and then we uh, attach those with a tooth in the middle that's a bridge. It's like a bridge. And I said, yeah, but I got a, she said, let me take a look. Oh, she said, we can't do that. You've got a implant there and we can't pull that crown. Oh, okay. So, so now what, what options are left? Well, the only option you've got left, pal, is either a wad of sourdough French bread or uh, a, uh, an implant. And I'm going, oh, the last time I had an implant cost me over $5,000. Uh, but apparently, I was I was doing it all wrong because when I suddenly went to it went to um, SAG AFTRA, I had Delta Dental for twenty five hundred dollars a year, and that's an insurance for dentistry. And I went, well, you know, it's still going to cost like you know, uh, she the woman at the office estimated four thousand dollars, and uh, she said, well, let's send out to Delta Dental and let's have them give us an estimated quota on the whole thing. And what happens if you got a dentist who is signed up with Delta Dental, who is a in-network Delta Dental person, they have to charge whatever Delta Dental says that for them to charge. So they hmm. sent me this estimate yesterday. And the estimate said, well, it's a $7,000 procedure, the whole thing. But with our discount, it comes to $3,200. And, wow. and you only have to pay $1,600. Oh, $1,600. Yeah. So, uh, and I've still got $1,900 left for the year. So I can get my teeth cleaned and I can get, my, I can get the implant and I'll put, pay them... 
1600 bucks for the uh, implant for my part of it, and I'm getting an implant for 1600 that, That's okay. You know, that's all right. That's what I'd normally paid for a root canal or for a crown. Mm -hmm. A crown costs that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, easily. So that was kind of good news. So I made an appointment in July to go in and have them insert a uh, an implant. And then that'll sit there and, and ruminate for about three months. And then they put the they put the tooth in. They put the abutment in and the tooth, and I'm out the door, and I've, I've got a full set of teeth again. Isn't that fun? Yeah. So, so good on me. Right. Anyway, so that was good news. Um, uh, I, I really would like some more people because I've got a couple of things I want to bring up, one of which is what went on in Georgia today. Oh, Alabama. Uh, Alabama, excuse me. Why do I keep thinking yeah. George? Well, George is doing a similar George thing. George is doing a similar yeah. thing. Yeah. Similar yeah. thing, but Alabama's worse. Yeah. Uh, but it, 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 oh. it, it, it was, uh, it, it's pretty terrible uh, what they're doing in Alabama. Um, but why they're doing it, you say, well, why are they doing it? Because they're going against Roe v. Wade, which means they can't really do it. You know, they can't enforce it. So why are they doing it? Well, they're doing it because they want it to go to the Supreme Court. And uh, what's interesting is, Guess who is against what they did in Alabama? Hold on to your seats. In fact, um, let me uh, let me let me uh, play a little a little song here that I've had sitting here for the longest time and I haven't used in a while. Guess who? Here we go. A lot of people say, "What's that? It's Pat, Pat Robertson." Pat Robertson. Yes. <laughs> He is? What? Huh? Yes, Pat I'm, Robertson Pat, said yeah. that he was against it because he felt that if it went to the Supreme Court, they would lose. Oh, okay. And he didn't want something that would lose. That it's, it's, he says it's futile. It's, it's a law. It's established law. And you know, in his adulpated way that he is these days, he basically said, "I'm against it." I said, "It's a." He said, "It's a waste of time." So, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. that's it's surprising. Yeah, he didn't say he was against it because you know you didn't let anybody have abortions, but you know now here is um, uh, another thing that came up that's kind of interesting. Another person. Oh, and hold on a second. Oh, here comes Jeff. What do you know? Let me see here. Ah, he didn't there, die. There's okay. Jeff, and now I. <laughs> Well, now here comes the hard part. I got to call Jeff back, which oh, means fun. which means that he's got to answer, and uh, I hope he does. Uh, but we're calling Jeff Stein, and let's see if he it's his calling Jeff Stein, calling Jeff Stein. Hey, Jeff Stein, we're calling you. Yeah, I, he, he he no, he's answering again the same way he called the last time. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it oh, is yeah. his wife over there, huh? It is good his wife you know, self the first time you have to call Jeff, back. Jeff, just call, just answer me. That's all. You know, we're calling you. Jeez, almighty. Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Come Maybe on. that's why he hasn't called in in a while. Well, I no, but I mean, Jeff, just, you know, I just I just called you. Uh, let but me let me hear you cuz Charlie shut off his uh, his voice feed hmm? from the cabinet. Let me see here. Where is uh, Jeff? Uh, I don't you see. Once I called him, he, he left the list. Uh, Jeff Stein. There we go. Now, Jeff, I'm going to call you. Okay, so answer the goddamn Skype. It's easy. You know. Easy. I know. It, it just comes back and it says what? Join or something like that. Uh, low, uh, weak, weak no, signals. No, no something. not that. Not that. But the other oh. part about. It. Well, oh, Jeff, we're trying. Now you got to press the little camera. Yeah, you got to press the camera when you call back. Yeah. Oh, I—that's what I did. I, I hit. I, I pressed the telephone, and then I had to turn my camera on. Push the camera. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, up I, in the upper I, right hand I, corner. Jeff, Jeff, I have tried to call you, Jeff, but you're not. Uh, you're not uh, calling back. And you know, I mean, I'll try you one more time. Uh, yeah. Just answer the phone, Jeff. Huh? Is that 
Just answer the phone. Don't try and call back. Answer the phone. Yeah. yeah. But you didn't have to call Charlie back, right? Because he was the first one. The first guy. Did. Yeah. yeah. That's how you do it. You got to race to get in. It says Jeff Stein. Still always beats me. It says Jeff Stein is unavailable. Yeah. Oh, boy. Trey said, fuck you, Alex. Don't call. <laughs> Don't let me in there. Here's Jeff Stein. I'm going to add him again. Let me try him again. He's calling Jeff Stein. Calling Jeff Stein. You know, uh, Jeff. Oh, there he is. Finally, there Jeff. Is. Jeff, I called. I, I called you. I called you, and you didn't answer. Adam. Don't you know I'm when you try up. that? Just wait, and and you will see a thing that shows that what what happens, guys. Tell him because I am not on the other end of this. Well, so. it's not obvious. There's a little. There are two icons in the upper right hand corner: a phone yeah. and a video camera. And you got to click one of them, but they're not blinking or anything. No. I, it took me a second to figure out what to do. Right. Me if a, you can click the phone, you're actually just, hanging up. Yeah, you see, I'm... Uh, up, uh, upper uh, right-hand uh, corner. The phone enough. answers, but it, there's no video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. And later on, later on, oh, when people call is. and we maybe get into number six or six, five or six, all of a sudden I will push that thing, it will say, call missed, and then the person will appear. It's get very strange, but oh, yeah, Jeff, it, called, when, it, when, it when, doesn't when, call. Whenever you call Jeff, I'm not, you're not going to get through. Okay, you're not going to get through unless you're the first person that calls. All right, okay. so you're not going to get through. So just wait for me to call you back, and you will see that I'm <laughs> calling you. And what do they? What do you see on your end when I start calling you back, Scott? What did you see? Oh, I, I saw I saw like two or three icons up there. Cancel, yeah, no, a right. cell phone, and maybe a, a, a video camera I didn't even notice. Yeah, a yeah, video camera. You hit the video camera, and, uh, you know, it's just like somebody's wow. calling you, okay? Yeah. All right. Well, all right, it's all right. Anyway, getting back to what we were saying. See, After I mean, this, is, this is what I said to the people at, at Skype. I said, I don't like doing it this way because it is too clumsy. You know, I've got to take time out to say, oh, come on, Jeff, answer the phone. And, you know, uh, uh, I've got to call everybody back and so on. So it just, and everybody who's listening realize that the situation is that if I call you, if you call and I don't answer, just wait. I'll be calling you back. You'll get a, a call and then you just click on the camera and you're on. Okay. See, I wouldn't have to do all this explaining if they would just fix this goddamn thing. Anyway, where was I? Oh, so we talked about Pat Robertson being against this thing in Alabama. Uh, uh, predictably enough, uh, someone else is against it, Alyssa Milano. Now, yeah. Alyssa Milano, if you don't know her, is a mediocre television actress who used to, like... Um, prance her tits around TV and, and her ass, and then complain that people were hitting on her. Uh, you know, um, uh, uh, but, uh, and, and, you know, it was very anti-porn and all of that, and yet she made her career by, like, you know, hey, look at me, you know. So, anyway. My eye, your eye, my eyes are up here. Yeah, anyway. So, so um, she today came out with the first thing she's ever said that I think is a good idea. She's saying to women of America, until they take care of these archaic laws that are trying to keep a woman from doing what she wants to with her, uh, with her body, that they, the women in America should with, withhold sex. Yep. I, I think that's a great plan. Yep. Now, I don't know if those old farts in the legislature down in Alabama, that would affect them because they probably haven't gotten an erection in a couple of years. But it certainly would make a lot of their constituents mad. <laughs> My wife isn't fucking me because this guy voted for the abortion thing. Yeah. I, I, I think it's a great plan. I think Alyssa Milano came up with something really good. Uh, you know, so huh. no pussy for you. You know, and uh, you have no idea how fast guys will cave if that's the what's at stake, you know. But I just find it horrible that they even are considering doing this. Um, uh, this fetal heartbeat thing is just ridiculous because it's not really a heartbeat. 
Well, it's, it's a collection like, of cells that have an electrical yeah. impulse. It's not yeah. a heart. It's spasming cells. Is all. It's not a, well, it's not see, a heartbeat. He, it's not a heart. It's not it bumping. It sounds like a heartbeat, but it's not a heartbeat. No. No. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, look, I'm the kind of guy who believes, uh, if, if you were to ask me personally, do I believe in abortion? No, not for me. If, if some woman I knew got pregnant, I would do everything I could to encourage her to have the kid, all right, uh, and be supportive of any decision that she would, she would want to make, all right? But uh, that's, it's not my decision to tell somebody else what to do. Uh, it's only my own personal morality that makes me say, hey, I would want to have the, see, her have, uh, see her have the baby. But if she doesn't want an ugly baby that looks like me, I understand, you know? But <laughs> it, 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 so I mean, what we're talking about here basically is we're talking about uh, uh, a, a whole uh, uh, bunch of people telling women again what to do with their bodies. Well, and, and I would never think of what to tell a woman what to do with her body because God knows I've tried and they won't. But, can can I know. ask a question about this Alabama? I, I don't yeah. know if I heard it right, mm -hmm. but they didn't outlaw abortion. They just made it illegal for a doctor to perform an abortion, right? No. They no. made they, oh. they made it illegal to have an abortion. And that any doctor who does it is subject to 99 years 99. in prison. Oh, okay. Well, okay. 99 to, years? It, no, it says yes. up, up to 99 years in prison. Oh, my God. Okay, I, I misunderstood then. I, th I thought it just... Just was the doctor part. A doctor couldn't perform the abortion. Yeah, the doctor. Oh, the woman could go to prison too. Nothing happens to the woman then. No, the woman can go to prison too. There are oh, there okay. are exceptions. There, oh, really? She could. Yeah. Oh wow. Uh, there are exceptions. Uh, I think. No, rape is not an exception in this law. No, not and, in that and, law. And, and, incest is not an exception. And, and neither is incest. But you know, that, that's the, what, the only, yeah, the only, like the only excuse like to rape their daughters, yeah. I guess. The only excuse. Well, it is Alabama. The only, yeah. the only excuse uh, that you can have to get an abortion now in the state of Alabama is that the child might be Trump's. So. Uh, <laughs> 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 ding, 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 ding. <laughs> That's a good one. That made Jack smile. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's not even an exception if the woman's life is at risk, if she no, might die. There was. That was an exception. The woman's life was in danger, I believe. All right, maybe that's what Georgia was considering that. One of the states, they, they didn't, wouldn't even have an exception for the woman's life. Uh, uh, this state... Uh... I, I don't know if you know I'm, I I don't know if that's part of the law or not. I think if, if the woman's life is at stake, I think you can. Now, there's nothing to prevent this person from going to the next state over and going to Planned Parenthood and getting an abortion. What? I I, I believe that you can get up to a woman can get up to ten years in prison if she does that. They made it illegal for a woman to go to another state to get an abortion. Oh well, then this law isn't going to. Pass the sniff test at the Supreme Court. Even but she can get insurance from another state. That's okay. Yeah. So, but in the meantime, <laughs> until it doesn't pass the sniff test, yeah. there are going to be all these women who aren't going to be able to have abortions, right? Well, there may be some doctors who are going to say, fuck you, we're going to do them anyway. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and it, I hope so. Then it's going to become a big clusterfuck. You know, Spinoza once said that laws which are unenforceable are laughable. You know, and in this case, this law may be laughable because how do you go around enforcing it? You know, you can't. You don't know what's happening in a doctor's office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you see all the women dressed in the red outfits down there protesting? Yeah. Uh, well, well, from what? Handmaid's Tale. The Handmaid's yeah. Tale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it it's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, pretty disgusting. I mean. What dark you, ages stuff. It is really dark ages stuff. And, and uh, I just, you know, I really have a, a real problem with these, uh, with these people because the, why they do it, I have no idea. I, I don't believe that in that legislature, and I looked at them, and they were some really old men. Uh, I don't think these are particularly religious people. 
I think they're but just the, do, but I, their I, constituents I, are. They're doing it for show for their constituents. Yeah. yeah. You know, but uh, maybe they're mis uh, maybe they're mis uh, um, calculating their their constituents. Maybe their constituents don't want this. You know. Hmm. Uh, I doubt that. I think they're pretty darn conservative down there. Yeah, but still, even in these states uh, like Mississippi, uh, Alabama, Georgia, there's a majority of people that don't want Roe v. Wade overturned. Oh, okay. Well, who knows then? Yeah, well, Roe v. Wade, the problem they're going to have with Roe v. Wade is Roe v. Wade has been around so long, it's established law. Yeah. And the Supreme Court is not of a desire to overturn established uh, precedent. I don't know. I, I wouldn't agree with that, though. Either. I don't well, think I, Kavanaugh believes that. Well, we don't know what Kavanaugh believes. We have no idea. You know, he could well be that guy who surprises you with some of his decisions. We don't know. We don't know. So. Yeah. But, I mean, I just don't, I, I don't understand it. It makes no sense to me at all. Uh, and uh, uh, so, you know, that's, that's what's happening down in, uh, down in uh, uh, where is it again, Georgia? Alabama. 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 They all, they all, so, they, what, they all seem like the same state to me. I don't yeah, know why. It is. Yeah. Are they trying anything like that in Texas, uh, Scott? I don't think that came up. They they had some stuff the last time where they like cut the number of abortion clinics. They changed that the, you had to have an abortion with a doctor having rights to a hospital in case something went wrong. So a lot of these abortion clinics had to close down. There's only like seven in the whole state of Texas, and yeah. it maybe went to like four. I mean, I don't know. I never. I don't have to worry enough about an abortion, and my wife doesn't either anymore. So. Yeah. So. Well, there was one law they tried to pass. I don't know if it passed or not, but uh, they it was it was up was if a woman has an abortion after 20 weeks, she could get the death penalty. Oh, yeah, that's that sounds that sounds about right. Really? This is in Alabama. No, this was in Texas. Oh, wow. Yeah. Death penalty. Yeah. Death penalty. So if a woman got raped and. She couldn't prove in court that she really was raped, and she had an abortion. She could get the death penalty, and a rapist would go free. That's like Saudi Arabia. Yeah, no kidding. Texas Sharia law. Wow. <laughs> Deep in the Sharia of Texas. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, this is it's it's bizarre. It is just our country's bizarre. become a shit show and a half. I mean, it's it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Republicans will do anything to win. Yeah. Don't don't forget the vice president is on the Yeah. Group. Oh, he's in that crowd. Yeah. Oh, no, there's no question about it. He's he's very much in that crowd. So we might be better off with Trump than him, huh? Well, I uh that, yes. We you, don't know. You know, I well, just I don't know. I, Trump's suicidal. I am so sick of Trump. To tell you the goddamn truth, uh, I just don't, I can't, I can't live with him anymore. You know, I just, I, it, 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 I, what I don't like, thank God Phil isn't here to put his fucking two cents worth in on this. I have never seen anybody make such a mockery out of the presidency in my life. You know, somebody who, who doesn't take it seriously. And plays yeah. it like it's some kind of game for his own ego. It yeah. is just horrible what he's done to the presidency and to our reputation around the world. And, and the only thing I worry about, for instance, in the Middle East, is that we could have a war because somebody accidentally fires first. And people go, well, you know, the Iranians could do that. And I said, more likely, Trump could do that, you know? And I just, I've gotten to the point where I'm so dis, disillusioned about it all that I, 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 I wake up in the morning and go, you know, I can't even turn on MSNBC. I don't want to see what Trump did today. <laughs> I, there was some, some stuff he did today with uh, immigrants, right? 
where he, he knew new things about what immigrants have to do in order to, I don't know, get citizenship or whatever. I don't know. They have to pay us dollars. Huh? The White they House. Have to Trump hundred dollars, so he he's got to have his vig come into it. Yeah. What well, they you? also the White House also said they were not going to cooperate with Congress on anything that was subpoenaed, no matter what it was, and that's. That's that's obstruction of justice right there. Yeah. yeah, but this was something that had to do with immigrants. And they were talking about immigrants and uh, oh, something about that he wants them to have, uh, have to prove that they have education or something like that in order to be considered for uh, amnesty. You know. How about if they have a spelling bee against Trump? <laughs> <laughs> in English. Yeah. In, Eng oh, in, yeah, yeah. in English, yeah, yeah, in English, they'd still win. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just you know, it's bizarre. It's just Spelled bizarre. Gringo. Wait a minute, somebody else is calling, and it's, mm -hmm. it's it's Josh Wheeler who's calling. Let's see here, if I can get Josh on, he he doesn't come on automatically, so I will have to call Josh back. So here we go, calling Josh back. Add. And uh, he should be here momentarily. And let me just go get my uh, uh, my my thing here, so I can put uh, put him in the. Uh, uh, I'm calling you, Josh. Why aren't you answering? Come on. There he is. Okay. All right. Hello, hello, hello Josh. How are you? Hello. I'm great. How are you? Okay. Give me uh, give me some picture here, because uh, if I don't get picture, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't uh, let me. Um, there we go. Can you there, have me there? There we go. Hold on a second. Let me see here. Pop pa da pa da pa da pa do. And uh, what uh, what name do you use? Let's see here. Are you are you not here? For some reason. This is ridiculous. Okay. Hold on a second. Da 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 da. Let me take care of that. Let me. Do you miss a night calling? He forgets what your name is. <laughs> yeah. No. It, it, it's that what I'm having to deal with here is everybody's uh, little, 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 uh, what do you call it, uh, name. Uh, wait a minute, now you should be on there. Hold on a second, hold on. Uh, okay, I'm going to answer Charlene Martinez, but she isn't going to get on. Hold on a second. There's Josh, okay, and that is in number five slot, and it should be, where, oh, where, where the, f why the fuck isn't Josh going on there? Let's see here. What happens if I put somebody else in there? Uh, there we go. Okay, that goes. Okay, so we have two two Jeffs. Now let me try and put Josh in that spot. Uh, let's see how this goes. Okay, Josh, come on. What? What's the problem? Uh oh, Josh went away. Oh, that's the problem. Oh, okay. was he frozen? I didn't even uh, notice. Huh? He might have been frozen for a while. I didn't yeah. even know. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, let me hold, hold on a second. Let me call. Oh, let me call Charlene. Oh, this this whole thing. You know, I just it was just so nice when I could do Click that ad. Okay. We're Charlene. Hello, Charlene. Come on. Uh, we're calling you. Answer the call, Charlene. You know. Uh, 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 Charlene Marti uh, joined, okay, and what is there is her, I think, okay, is that her? Come on. I don't have a picture. Yeah. Uh, no? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, but you're, sure. on, you're on a phone. Yeah, well, you can't take a phone. Well, I don't like to. It's a, it's a iPhone. Yeah, but I don't, I like to get a picture because I don't like that Skype slogan oh, up there. I, I hit the picture. It didn't come on. No, no I see it. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, hold on a second. Here comes Josh. Let me see here. Of course, I, now I have to call Josh back. See, I mean, what I hate about this is this all takes time. You yeah. Know? yeah. And the other way, I just clicked the button and everything was going. All right, calling Josh Wheeler. Okay, okay. Josh, are you there now, Josh? Yes, do you have me now? Uh, 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 yes, uh, we do. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me, Josh Wheeler. Uh, Josh W. 42. There we go. 
And there we are. Okay. And uh, we still don't have. Um, uh, we st we still don't have. We don't have a picture. We have a, a, a still picture of her, not a camera. Yeah, Charlene, are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, you can't call back using Skype uh, video. All right, I'll call back. Okay, okay, call back using Skype video. Okay. All righty. All righty. Okay. Well, where were we? See now that see how much time that takes, and then you, we could be discussing stuff. Here, here comes Josh, however, and Josh is our uh, expert on the uh, on the Constitution. How do you think this this thing's going to hold up? Uh, well, well, what's that? I, I was driving home from the baseball game and I missed you, so I just jumped in here. What well, we were talking about the whole thing going on down in uh, where is it, Virginia, Alabama? Alabama. I keep. <laughs> oh, man. I keep getting those, those states all all screwed up. Here we go. Uh, I got to go get, uh, uh, oh, there she is. Okay, there we go. There you go. Now we have a picture. Yeah, let me just uh, put her in here. I got to do that. Okay, there we go. And uh, we're, you know, uh, there we go. So now, where were we? So see, that took that took 10 minutes, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, th that's why I hate Skype and why Skype should fix this really fast, okay? All right. Anyway, uh, the thi thing in Virginia, is it, am I right? Virginia. Alabama. 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 Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Alabama is next to Texas, and I remember I went to Alabama. No, it's I, not next to Texas. <laughs> no. Well, it's next to something. I traveled through it. Georgia. I traveled through it one night, to it one night, and I stayed in Montgomery, and I stayed in a hotel, and I booked into the hotel, and they gave me a room, and I went up to the room, and I noticed that they had painted over the door, but they hadn't painted over what somebody had done to the door was a giant swastika. Wow. Uh, and that, that was the room for the Jew for the night. Uh, nice. Yeah. Isn't that where uh, they shot Martin Luther King, Montgomery? Did you say, or what, what was it? Uh, uh, and King were shot in Memphis. I thought it was Memphis. Yeah, Memphis. Memphis the King. Guy. Yeah, that's, uh -uh. that's Tennessee. I guess. Montgomery it, is uh, the march that they did from Selma. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I knew it had something to do with. And by the way, I also remember on that same trip passing into Selma, and the sign saying it didn't say "Welcome to Selma." It said "Selma Police Authority begins here." <laughs> you've been no warned. Allowed. You've been warned. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You've been warned. So, but and no, but so I think we were talking about Alabama uh, and the uh, and the abortion and the abortion six on. weeks. What? What about it, after, the abortion's illegal after six weeks? That's crazy. Yeah. That's in Georgia. Yeah, after six weeks, a lot of women don't know they're pregnant yet. Yeah. Right, right. You know, what you should do is probably now what women will do is they go out, they have a one night stand, they don't use a condom. Take the pill. So, no. The morning after well, pill. Well, you can take yeah. the morning after pill, either that or just go down and get a, 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 a an abortion with, without any any fetus, you know, just, <laughs> just to be on the safe side. A DNC yeah. thing like yeah. But how do how do you think something a law like that's going to hold up in the Supreme Court? I mean, are they going to be able to make a case there in the Supreme Court, Josh? Well, all you can do is go off basically. I think you know historical precedent, which would tell you that it it is probably too restrictive. Mm -hmm. But you know the problems with the problem with these things is you just never know. Until you get there and get a ruling, you know, I mean, that's, that's, but see, that's what they want, you know, that's why they passed a law that's too restrictive. I mean, even they know that it's too restrictive, mm -hmm. but that's why they did it. I mean, they want to be sued. I mean, it would have been more honest if the governor had signed the bill and just walked out and maybe he did it and I missed it. And, you know, but it just walked out to the podium and said, come on, fucking sue us. That's exactly what we want. We want to get an answer once and for all, because if we can get this to the Supreme Court, which is probably what will happen, because a lower court will either rule for them or against them, and regardless of which happens, someone will appeal, right? Yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. then it'll go to another, and someone will appeal, and then finally, once it's, you know, at the Circuit Court of Appeals or whatever, and you know that the next appeal is to the Supreme Court, and if mm -hmm. they agree to take it up, you know, the way they that they look at it is by and by Kavanaugh's passing this law. 
it doesn't really cost him anything, right? I mean, no one in their state is going to vote the people that passed that office in all likelihood, okay? Yeah. This law probably isn't going to get their governor voted out. It probably isn't going to get their two U.S. senators or hardly any of their Republican white male congressmen voted out. So everybody's pretty safe in passing it. And I think the way they figure is because it's not going to cost them any political capital like that. If you get something to the Supreme Court, you got a 50-50 chance, right? Yeah. I mean, you're in an extra inning ball game here. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, so that's what, I mean, this is exactly what they want. Yeah. And I don't really think I can tell you what's going to happen. I mean, I would lean towards saying that the court is probably not going to do an about face on what are we looking at now? 40 plus years or whatever of, mm -hmm. you know, settled law. And just totally up in the entire, and just cause political chaos. Hold on a second. You know? Hold on a second, Scott. Have you got your camera on? Yeah. Wow, because I'm I'm not getting you. I think oh, it I is. You. Let me check. I, I see. Him. Yeah, I know you, you're getting him, but I'm getting like these this plus two thing, and I don't want that. I want the pictures up there, oh. and I don't know what this is all about. I'm here. I'm here. You know. Uh, let me. Let me. Because what I was able to do last week was if I just went over here to the side, maybe if I do this, will that do anything? No. I've got I've got the Skype logo on two of you. And, yeah. And, and it, it, YouTube. Huh? I see that on YouTube, yeah. Yeah, and it shouldn't be. Oh, I'm going to call my agent. This is against all union rules. Yeah, <laughs> there, you just came back. And I bet uh, 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 Jeff, Jeff took you, a snapshot. You just took a snapshot, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Did he again? Wait Not a minute. Again. It, 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 oh, no. Wait, wait a minute. What does that mean? And, and wait a minute. Now two other people are not here. Who isn't here? Uh, we've got the Skype picture on two other people. Uh, oh, geez. There's, there's, we don't need that. Jeff? Why do I just get an image? <laughs> Jeez. Oh my God. Ray just came back. Oh, I'm here again. There I am. Well, I know Ray's there, but I mean, what's, where, what's the problem here? This is what I don't understand. On this call, okay, is, uh, uh, let's see here. Okay, Scott Boddicker. Okay, Scott Boddicker. Yeah. Okay. So what do I, what do, I do if I want Scott? Oh, I, well, I see. I could do that. I don't know. This is this is ridiculous. This is you Skype know, sucks, Alex. It really yeah, does. Skype Skype is really fucked up, you know. And uh, um, uh, talk to me, Scott. Uh, I just tried to bring on, open up my Safari to see the what's going on there because I I shut it down to save yeah. some bandwidth and everything, and uh, it said I can't even open up Safari right now. So it must be maybe my system is. Yes, no. Yeah, but well, I, two, I, yeah. Now, usually if well, I if, if I yeah. just went over to the side here, I could well, do. I disappeared again. I could do away with that, and I haven't been able to do away with it. So you know, I mean, uh, well now now we're I think we we're almost okay. Um, oh. wow, yeah, yeah, we sh yeah now we're okay. I I did something really wacky <laughs> here, with me. So okay. That, okay. I, I hate this, folks. I'm so sorry that you have to put up with this. Uh, but now let me go to the picture where we have everybody. There we go. Okay. Hello, Patrick. Hi. I know this isn't interesting, folks, to have these kind of problems going on. But it, it's Skype, and it, it, all of a sudden it, it says, you know, there are two people in the, uh, up, Oh, forget it. Anyway, we got all the pictures back again. Ah, oh, Jesus! I'm yeah. You know, I'm so sick of this. Um, anyway, where were we? Oh yeah. So go ahead, uh, uh, um, Josh. Continue. Well, I was just saying. Mm -hmm. You know, other than this being exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, you were asking what I think. I would probably lean towards saying that. I don't really think the court would basically caused political chaos by doing an about face on the last, you know, 40 plus years of, you know, judicial precedent. I mean, 
you never know. I mean, that that was my point before was, you know, you get to the court, if you get it there at the highest court in the land, you know, it's it's a 50-50 chance. I mean, they go behind closed doors. You you never know what they're going to come out and say. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I find it a little hard to believe, you know, just kind of good sense and a feeling of history would tell you that, you know, this is just going to be a bunch of noise and it's going to kick the argument out there for the 2020 election. I think that's another motivation for them because this is going to take a while to get through the system. So let's say it gets there around then they, they lose or whatever, you know, Hey, you got to reelect Trump. We were, we were an eyelash away. You get us one more good justice and we'll get you next time. I mean, you know, I, I think it's all basically politics that it's not going to really, you know, overturn, you know, decades worth of, you know, what people like to, you know, settled law. But, hey, nothing's ever settled in America. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's that's the real point. Uh, we, sure. we change. Charlene has her hand up. Yes, Charlene. Well, we're, we're talking about the Supreme Court and all that stuff. Uh, do you think that, like, it's just Kavanaugh, like, you know, that bastard's in there, you know, and we know, you know, how he is with the religious stuff and all that. No, no but do, 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 wait a minute, do we, do we, do we, wait a minute, do we, do we know, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, like, wait a minute. hold know? on a second, do we know where he stands religiously? I mean, he's never really, you know, nobody's ever said this is a real church goer or anything like that, so we don't know. But he's Catholic. Well, neither is Trump. Trump isn't really a churchgoer, but all of a sudden, since he's a Republican and all this stuff, you know, he, he gets religious, you know, yeah. in his own way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kavanaugh's probably like that. Cause he Didn't Kavanaugh go to a right? boys' high school? A, a Catholic boys' high school? Male high yeah, school? Yeah, yeah, he's very, all yeah, boys, he's all Kavanaugh, boys. yeah. A beer-drinking Irish guy, right? Yeah. Or something, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, but, I mean, you, you still never know, I guess, just because, I mean, Justice Scalia, for example, was Catholic and, and was actually known to be a pretty strong practicing Catholic. I mean, yeah, yeah. attended mass regular. I mean, you know, uh, obviously I've never met him, but, you know, he heard, you know, that he was the kind of guy that, you know, prayed before he went to bed, you know, that kind of guy. I mean, you know, and. The Catholic Church, you know, is not really pro-death penalty, you know. I mean, if you go to a priest, a priest is going to tell you, you know, at least I think, you know, the taking of any life is, you know, unjust. And yet, you know, Scalia was pretty pro-death penalty and the fact that he believed that it wasn't unconstitutional. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You never know. You, you can't put these people in boxes and, well, what you I'm know. what I was trying to say like in my to, ineloquent right. way is do, do we have enough people there that'll— you know, well, you just said it. We don't know what's going to happen. We have to wait and see if it ever does make the Supreme Court. The way this country is, you never know. And mm -hmm. we don't know what's going to happen. You know, uh, it'll be thrown out. You, you, knows, you were but. talking about Scalia. Uh, who was it? Uh, Kavanaugh? Or was it Scalia who said a prayer every night? Who did you say prayed every night? Scalia. Scalia. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, well, I don't know if he did. I'm just saying I always <laughs> heard he was a... Well, let me, let he, me. He wasn't just Catholic in the way that you're Jewish. I mean, he was a practicing. Let me let me admit some, Let me admit something that I uh, don't really usually admit to, but I want to. I want to put it on the table here. Uh, I I say prayer every night. I have for all of my life. Um, and uh, I'm for abortion. Okay, so you know what does that have to do with it? You know, I mean, just because you say a prayer every night, um, a prayer is an affirmation. You know, and 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 does not necessarily have to be done in a religious context. All right, um, I don't think, uh, and I've never prayed, by the way, for myself. You know, I've never my prayers have never been for myself. They've always been for somebody else or something else or other people, because I believed if there was a God, he would look down at me and say, you selfish fuck, why are you asking for stuff for yourself if you think I'm listening, you know? And, and I, I don't believe prayers are, are to be used for people to relieve themselves of something. What do you, Scott, you're religious. Well, how do you feel about that? Well, I, 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 I don't think it, you're for abortion, Alex. I think you're for, for choice. 
Uh, the woman's I'm, right to choose, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, but no, I, but, but, nobody I, but, but, I know but, is for abortion. Well, yeah, well, nobody's well, pro-abortion. Yeah. Like being pro-cancer. Nobody's pro-cancer. Well, well, I, 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 I don't know. Are, are, aren't, we mixing, right. aren't we mixing, aren't we mixing uh, terms here a little bit? I mean, um, I sometimes like to say I'm pro-abortion because I, if by going I'm, I'm pro-life or pro-choice. Um, uh, choice. Uh, uh, I'm not really saying what it is about. It is abortion. I mean, it is the uh, the termination of a fetus, um, which probably in one in four cases of pregnancy happens naturally anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. So uh, I, I'm for the, the uh, ending of the cessation. I don't know how I feel about late-term abortions. I don't know. That's, that, that's, that's one of the things I'm a little queasy about. How about you, Patrick? You haven't said anything about any of this. I'm not going to say anything either. I I had the opportunity to be on Facebook, and I said, I ain't saying shit, and I ain't saying shit here either. Well, why is that? (laughs) Because you don't give a fuck. I want you to say shit about why you're not saying shit. (laughs) Because whatever answer I give, it's going to be wrong. So it it doesn't matter what I think. Why do you think it's necessarily going to be wrong? I mean... um, uh, if it's not a topic I want to wade oh, into. Oh, okay. All right. I I understand that, and I I admire that. You know, um, I just I, you know I just don't think that it's it's a question of, um, of of even morality here. It's a question of the right of a person to make a choice, and in this case, it's women. You know, guys don't get pregnant. If they got pregnant, nope. believe it or not, Roe versus Wade would be a prayer we said every night, you know. Mm-hmm. But men the don't. The should be available at Jiffy Lube. It'd be, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, and so it's really a question of, it's it, you know, uh, and I kind of go along with you, Patrick, on not wading into the issue because you're a guy. And I'm a guy. And a lot of these people here, all except for Charlene, are guys. I assume you are. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I don't want to make judgments in this day and age. Um, but, uh, do we have the right to even have an opinion on this? You know, uh, and and that's why when I looked at the legislature from Alabama and all the people who voted for this law were guys, they were all old white men. I went, yeah. there's something... 85% were guys, yeah. Yeah, uh, it, 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 there's something very wrong about this. And and um, uh, th- that's why I just don't think, you know, I, I, if Patrick doesn't want to say anything about it, maybe he's absolutely right. I mean, this is not a decision he should have to make. This is a decision every woman should be able to make for herself. In by the way, uh, let me let me let me bring something up here though. Uh, it, 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 um, if a woman got pregnant by me, and it's happened, uh, and uh, it happened once when I was a kid, and it happened once when I was in later life, and when I was approached by the woman who was a, my girlfriend at the time, um, uh, she said, "I think I'm pregnant," and I went, "Okay, what do you want to do about it?" And she says, well, I would like to have the kid. I said, great, then we'll have the kid. You know, I mean, it was not my choice to make. It was her choice to make. She turned out she, was, she wasn't pregnant. But I, I felt that in my own particular case, you know, if, if she said to me, well, what do you think we should do? I'd say, well, let's have the kid. You know, that's just the way I am. It's just how I would feel about it. Uh, but... If she suddenly said, well, I don't want to have the kid. I'm going to get an abortion. I'd say, hey, you know, you that's your choice to make. It's your body. It's inside your body. You know, so really, as a guy, you have to be kept out of the conversation. On the other hand, and here comes the big question. Let's say a woman gets pregnant. Should the person who got her pregnant, if she knows who it is, be informed that she's getting an abortion? That's a good one, Alex. <laughs> yeah, because there's no let, law about that. Well, yeah. well, the part of this is okay uh, when we when we're talking about it. Part of this is that half of that child is the guys. Okay, uh, 
not that he should have the determining factor in all of this by saying, yes, you can have an abortion or you can't have an abortion, but that he should be able to say, wait a minute, listen, let's talk about this. Maybe the woman assumed that she, the guy didn't love her, you know, or didn't want to have a kid with her. I mean, what's the answer there? Yes, Charlie. Well, the problem that nobody seems to consider is the fact that there is a risk to taking a pregnancy to term. Women actually die in childbirth. A hundred percent of the risk is on them. There's not one man in the history of the world that has ever died in childbirth. All the risk is on the women. And um, the, the maternal mortality. Well, wait a minute. I, saw, I saw a movie. I, I saw a movie once about a devil baby, and he oh. came out of the womb and killed the father. I saw that movie. So. Oh, I saw Rosemary's <laughs> Baby. Rosemary's Baby doesn't do yeah. that. But um, you know, <laughs> you know. Anyway, I, the maternal. Yeah, I know. There are more saying. women dying in childbirth every year. Yeah. Just uh, this is when we're going yeah. to have babies, when the risk is getting higher and higher. Yeah. So these same Republicans passing these draconian laws are not doing anything to safeguard the pregnant women safely through their pregnancy. Right. But again, let me get back to that question, though. Should, should the potential father be informed that the abortion is going to take place? Uh, I'd say no. Okay. Anybody else have want to pipe in on that? If, if I can say, I, I would not want to know if she was having an abortion. I mean, whether or not they inform me or not, I would not want to be informed. Yeah, I oh. wouldn't either. Okay. Now, you know, we also, we, we also don't add in the factor here that some people already have a passel of kids. And they don't want another one. Yeah. They've, right. they've had three kids, and they can't afford four. Right. And and they want to terminate the pregnancy. Very early, they made the decision, let's not have another one, you know. And the woman goes, hey, you know, I've, I popped three of these puppies out already. I don't want to have to pop another one out, right? So the question is, uh, uh, you know, what happens to these people? Is the state of Alabama going to say, hey, you know what we'll do? We'll give you a break of $10,000 a year on your taxes if you have that kid. No, they're not doing no. anything like that. They're not giving you any kind of rebate. They're not giving you any kind of help. You know. Well, what, what, what they can do is they can take the kid to the firehouse and give the kid up. Let oh, the state the pay the woman right. survive. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. You know, these people who are uh, uh, against abortion are not against abortion uh, and are not willing to say, okay, but, you know, here's what we'll do for the person who keeps the baby, you know, uh, or, or we, we're going to set up a situation where, where we're all going to adopt these children, you know. Right. Uh, it, 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 unless it's your kid, unless you're having it, you have no right in making a statement about it. Yes, uh, Jeff. Turn your mic on, Jeff. We should remember what Trump did to all of these uh, kids the, that no longer to these kids. They're in the United States, but they don't know where their parents are because the Trump threw the parents out of the country. Yeah. And I don't know who's responsible for those kids. Well, certainly Trump should be, but he isn't. You know, uh, it's terrible. But... You know, uh, uh, so Alyssa Milano, I think, had a good plan, her whole plan, too. Did you hear about this, Patrick? That Alyssa Milano said that until, uh, until women have the rights over their own bodies, uh, w women of America should have a strike and refuse to have sex with men. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard some people talking about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> On The View, they were talking about it. I well, I, uh, you know, I don't think it's a bad tactic. Because, uh, you know, those those 30 or 40 old men in the Alabama, uh, is it Alabama state legislature, uh, probably wouldn't be affected because it's been years since any of them fucked. But, mm -hmm. but their constituents are going to get a little pissed off that they aren't getting laid. You know? I don't know. That little blue pill works. <laughs> it may be fucking a lot of people. Viagra or whatever. 
yeah. what do you, uh, what do you mean using Viagra? Oh, them? Oh, yeah. Them. No, those guys. And even if they listen, even if they had uh, 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 the little blue pill, and they could get an erection, uh, who would want to fuck them? Okay. <laughs> oh, I mean, we have to add that to the uh, to the. Uh, I saw the one guy. Oh, he was pretty bad. <laughs> Well, anyway. That's why he wants to control women. Um, I got a couple of other stories I want to bring up here, and we can go back to this if you want to, but, uh, you know, uh, this it, 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 I don't know how long we can keep up with this one topic. Disney is gaining full control of Hulu. Wow. Oh, boy. And my question is, Patrick, I think you can jump in on this. Does Disney own too much? You know, are, do they have too much of the entertainment pie? What, what, what do you think, Patrick? They've got your Star Wars, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know that it, it's hitting Monopoly status, though. You know, that that's where I guess I would come in and having more of a problem with it. You know, there are still other companies out there that can do the same things. Um, that's, that's, that's not necessarily what dictates what a monopoly is and isn't. If it is a, a, if they own enough of the share of the market that they can make it rough for the other guys. In other words, a lot of people say this may wind up hurting Netflix, as an example. Uh, because yeah. Disney will withhold all the properties they own from Netflix and only allow it to be shown on properties they own, yeah. then uh, there is some danger that it is monopoly. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's getting there. I, I'm not going to deny that. I, I just don't know that it's there yet, and I don't know what yet looked like. But it... it, it you could... You could sway me to say yes. Could I sway you to say yes by, you know, I wish I could sit here and tell you things they don't own, but I can't think of any at this moment. I mean, they own, they own, the, they own the Star Wars franchise. They, they own, they just bought up all the Fox properties except for the uh, news network, except for the News Corp stuff. Uh, so They own ABC. They ABC. own ABC. Right. Right, mm -hmm. they own all the Star Wars pictures, all the uh, what was it, uh, all the uh, Marvel, Marvel stuff. Uh, there's more stuff they own that's a f franchise. I mean, it's on and on and on and on until if they withhold their stuff from, say, Netflix or some other organization who wants to, you know, compete against them, uh, they won't be able to, you know. Uh, uh, and and it could be rougher as time goes on for Netflix unless. They come up with enough new properties and stuff they create that people, you know, want to want to um, uh, watch that stuff. Yes, uh, uh, Charlene has her hand up. Yes, Charlene. All right, you brought up, you know, is it a monopoly and all that? And is someone Alex going to like? Who is it, or is there someone that was is going to look at it and tell them it's a monopoly if it is one? Well, uh, somebody eventually would have to file suit against them, and the government would have to file suit against them and say, you know. Like, for instance, uh, Apple is being sued uh, as a monopoly now by app makers, I think it is, who are saying that they're pricing the apps too high and that they, okay. keep, and they're, and they're, and they keep the market to themselves because it's proprietary to their phones and they have to charge what mm -hmm. Apple says they have to charge. I agree. And, uh, and they're saying that that's, <laughs> uh, that's uh, restraint of trade, you know, and that's it's, yeah. as a result of monopoly. You know, what, what happened is we never thought of Apple as a monopoly, but if you think about it, it's become one, you know, in right. certain fields, mm -hmm. you know, although I would say like, in the phone field, uh, gotcha. there are other phones. Yeah. They sell more Samsungs in this world than they do Apple phones. There's a good reason for that. Apple phones are so fucking expensive. Yeah. You know, who wants to buy one and pay that kind mm -hmm. of money for a fucking phone? Well, I'm one of those fucking assholes, okay? 
bought a new one. Huh? <laughs> you bought a new one. No, no, no. This, a, 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 a while back, I bought a new one. But here's the here's the here's the problem with it. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, I can't get out of this now because I've got an Apple computer, Apple phones, Apple Watch. I've, I've, I'm in the whole eco structure of Apple, and right. I can't get out of it, and I got to pay whatever Apple wants to pay. You know, so what the hell? That's how they get you. That's how they get you exactly. So, uh, what can I, what can I say? Um, but uh, you know, as long as they keep fixing my machine for free, I don't mind. Anyway, but uh, uh, it, it, so here Disney is going to have Hulu. They're already going to have Disney Plus as well, which is another channel. So they're going to have a lion's share of the entertainment package. It's 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 pretty uh, pretty uh, whatever. And also, yeah. what's happening is the the other entertainment organizations are being bought up by, and this is absolutely the truth, are being bought up by um, basically conglomerates who like uh, telecommunications companies. AT&T, for instance, has bought out um, Warners, as an example. Wow. Gee, one of the things that, uh, that uh, isn't owned by... Um, uh, by 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 Disney, uh, and and they bought that out. Uh, and the reason they did it is because everybody is thinking now in this Netflix mindset that they want property that they can show. They want films and movies and backlogs and everything. And by buying up Warner Brothers, you're buying up the entire Warner's catalog, all the MGM. Pictures because at one point they merged with Warner's, um, so they've got a whole chunk of films that they can use for their own thing, and they've got HBO and they've got CNN, you know. So what are we coming down to? We're actually coming down to the entire entertainment industry being monopolized, as it were, by a handful of organizations, you know. And, and so where's the small guy going to come in? I mean, Netflix is the small guy, if you think about it. Netflix is Netflix. That's it. You know? And they made their own success. But um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. All I know is that the, the entertainment industry is completely besought by these corporations. Uh, and whoever thought that one day we would talk about Disney in this way, you know? Well. Disney made Mickey Mouse movies. That was it, you know? Uh, and I and was on the edge of going out of business most of its history. Perfect. Oh, after Snow White, Disney was always not oh, making money. Yeah. The only thing that kept him from closing the studio down was World War II came along, and he started housing the army at the Disney studios so they could make training films. And so he made a lot of money that way and kept the doors open. And then after the war, he learned how to make his cartoons cheaply. And he did Cinderella, and it became a big success, and he made it on the cheap. And, and then he started doing all the live-action stuff. But that company was always having trouble, and it never, never really started making it until Disney died, and Eisner took over. Yeah. Yeah. And then one thing led to another, and now they are the biggest... I, I think I can say this without anybody arguing with me, the biggest uh, con uh, entertainment conglomerate in the world. I can't think of anybody bigger. You know. And they just made $2 billion last week on the Avengers movie. So, you know. Well, they do, they do have a hand in everything, because don't they still own ABC? Yeah, they still yes, own, they own ABC. Right, which, and they also still own, if, if I remember correct, uh, they also still own ESPN, right? Uh, yes, it, 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 right. a good part of ESPN. They also own. Yeah. They also own um, uh, uh, Fox Network, television right. network. They own FX. They own all that FX stuff. You know. Wow. Um, so I mean, they they own uh, they own quite a quite a bit of stuff. You know, and uh, uh, they've what they I'll tell you what they've got is they've got a backlog 
of films and TV shows and things like that that would choke a horse. <laughs> you know. Uh, and, and plus they've got, you know, just all the all the Marvel stuff alone, if anybody owned all that, it's worth a fortune. Uh, you know. Yeah, that's some catalog now, right? Anybody, anybody see the latest Avengers, the latest Avengers movie? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess I'm with the rest of you. I didn't either. Uh, I'm waiting for it to come out on Netflix. <laughs> well, it won't. It, let's see. It probably won't come out on Netflix. It'll probably be the first film they show on Disney Plus. <laughs> probably. Okay. Is, is it a three-hour movie? Three hours. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. wow. Uh, I can't. I can't see it. My bladder won't go that long. And the first, <laughs> uh, the first half of the picture, the first uh, twenty, uh, what, the first forty minutes, fifty minutes of the picture is all telling the backstory, you know, of what was, oh my God, what went yeah. on. Yeah. No. Are all the characters like? And you don't have any desire to see this stuff, do you, Patrick? I, the only uh, Marvel movie that I've seen mm -hmm. uh, is. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. That was pretty good. And oh, I enjoyed it because it had nothing to do with any of the other movies. Um, and I saw, and I don't know if this counts in this grouping, but um, the uh, Spider-Man with, was it Elijah Wood or one of those? No. Uh, Toby, Toby McGuire. Toby McGuire. Yeah, McGuire. That, that <clears throat> man I saw and you could put a gun to my head and I don't think I could remember <laughs> seeing any other one. Yeah, well you know you say Guardians of the Galaxy you like because it, it didn't uh, it didn't it go with any of the other pictures. Yeah. And, and now yeah. and now they've been folded into the Avengers. Yeah. They're in this latest film and so are so many so many characters. That when I went and saw the picture just before this, I kept watching the picture and going, which character is that? Who is that? Who's that? Yeah. You know, it's kind of, yes, uh, Charlene. Well, you know, Patrick just mentioned uh, the, you know, Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. That was one of the first ones that started. And I got excited about the Marvel thing. You know, I had a neighbor and her son was, you know, you know, tell, saying they're going to do all the Marvel superheroes and all this stuff. So I went to go see that in the in the theater and everything, and I got very excited because I thought it was a great film and all this, you know. But then it started to be like, you know, they put a thousand different people in, you yeah. know, the, the that role, not just Tobey Maguire and the, the guy that, you know. And, and now it's just like that. I'm so sick of DC. I'm so sick of Marvel. It's it's you know I can't keep up with it all. You see any of this? I'm sure that people that are comic book freaks, younger younger people, are really mm -hmm. into it. But you know I can't keep up with all of them and see them all. Like you know, Ray, do you see any of this stuff at all? Do you? Uh, I've seen a few of them. I, but only because my kids want to go. Yeah. Otherwise, I would never, never go on to any. He was over all that stuff by then. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I, I'm I'm not one to not enjoy what I call dumb films. You know, I mean, it, it, it's fun entertainment. You know, but well, it's summertime stuff. But like, I went know. and saw the fir the first Avengers film, and I went, "What the fuck is going on here?" And then, I, like an idiot, I went and saw the second one and said, "This was as bad as the first one." <laughs> and I didn't go to the third one because I didn't want to get myself sucker punched again. <laughs> and I may wind up going to it when I know I can just walk in the door. You know, but I mean, I don't really give a shit. In the last film, they killed everybody off. So I'm supposed right. to sit here and go, um, okay, so you killed everybody off, huh? Well, mm hmm. Okay. That was like, remember how, the whole thing? How are you going to bring them like three times already? How are you going to bring know, them back? I'll it's tell crazy you. when they do things like that. Here's how, here's how I figured that thing worked with everybody dying in that last film, as they were all lying there on the ground. They said, everybody stay where you are. And then they brought in their agents. And they said, okay, <laughs> let's make a deal for the next movie. And if you don't make a good one, we're killing the character off permanently. Yeah. So, but I mean, I, it's just, it's just, it, 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 it I, I don't know. Those, I don't, I don't understand why those pictures are that popular, except there's just hype around them and that's it, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Um, I, I do watch the TV shows. 
Mm-hmm. I like them. I like the Marvel shows on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. I think they're really good. Yeah, the but they don't. Part. They don't. They're not going to have them anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. They, 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 you've seen the last of them. I think. Uh, I think maybe there's a Jessica Jones that hasn't been shown yet, but they mm-hmm. supposedly haven't. Uh, uh, these pictures are not. Uh, they're not doing. They're not doing Luke Cage anymore, and they're not doing what was the other one? That hor- the kung-, kung Fu one. I hated. I thought it was just terrible. <laughs> Uh, Daredevil was my favorite. But I liked, I liked, uh, I liked uh, what, you know, uh, Luke Cage because it, it was filmed right here in Harlem. I could tell you what street corner and they were going down. And uh, I really, I really enjoyed it a lot. Plus, they then also showed this building in it, too. So, you know, <laughs> can't yeah. beat that. Can't beat that. But, uh, but that's what I'm saying is that they, um, I think. There was a combination of they, they decided they weren't going to do the Marvel stuff anymore, or Marvel decided they, you know, Disney decided that Marvel wasn't going to be doing stuff on Netflix anymore. And the question is, they were Netflix originals, but where will they eventually wind up? Will they wind up on Disney Plus as part of their huge catalog, or uh, is it, are they still going to be able to show them over at uh, over at the Netflix, and I haven't looked to see if they're still on Netflix. They may not be there anymore. So, mm. you know. Wow. Yeah. But uh, uh, what the hell? You know. It, I thought some. Like, I thought Daredevil was really done really well. Oh, Daredevil. Which one? Dare, Daredevil. Oh, Daredevil. Was Daredevil. Fine. The series yeah. one, right? But I like yeah, the blind I, guy. I like Jessica Jones a lot. I yeah, think, I like her I, too. I thought she that was, great. was really, really good. And yeah. and as I say, I like Luke Cage, and uh, you know. But all I'm saying is I think we're in, uh, you know, uh, we're going into a entertainment doldrums. I mean, I just, I've, you know how we say, like, I keep saying radio doesn't exist anymore. It really doesn't. Uh, I don't think movies really exist that much anymore uh, 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 unless you have Netflix, in which case they're, they're allowing filmmakers to make movies. But the stuff that's going into the theaters are all these tentpole pictures in which you're trying to draw, draw huge crowds in to see these films. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't uh, quite frankly, I don't uh, uh, see the, the, a great future in the movie theater. In fact, I think the movie theater will probably die within the next couple of years. Why, why do you need a movie theater when you've got... They show you movies in the movie theaters in 4K, well, what do you have at home? You got 4K. Get yourself a nice big 75-inch screen, surround sound, and any movie that you could see in the theater, you could have the same experience except for the audience there at home. So what, where does the movie theater fit into all of this? I guess just its social aspect, which is, and what I always enjoyed about movies, was watching an entertainment with a bunch of other people, all laughing at the same time and all going, ooh, ah, at the same time. Do you go to the movie theaters at all, Patrick? I, I, it's probably not that easy for you, is it? I uh, it's easy enough for me to go. I just I refuse to pay the money to go see something that I don't know that I'm gonna really like. Yeah. Uh, the only the the last movie that I saw in the theater was fucking GI Joe, and that piece of shit. <laughs> fucking GI Joe. Yeah. Fucking GI Joe. <laughs> I, uh, fucking GI Joe. Yeah. That, so, fucking yeah. G.I. Jane. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it was, it wasn't the worst movie in the world, but I sure as hell got sucked out of my money for it, and I wasn't going to do that again. Well, I often complain about the fact that when girlfriend and I go to the movies, right? Um, mm-hmm. Let's say we go to see a 3D movie, okay? <coughs> for the two of us, it's going to run us forty-two dollars. Cool. Okay. Maybe more, maybe a little more, 44 now, okay? Then you add to that the cab going there, which is now because of a what they have called a congestion fee here in New York. <coughs> it costs us like $15 to get there and $15 to go home. So that's another 30 added to the 44. What are we up to? Add the popcorn, and before you're through, we've spent $75, $80 to go to a film and then go to it, and it's terrible. Yeah, you know, and there's no way to get your money back, and more than that, there's at my age, there's no way to get your time back. 
So, you know, is that worth it? No, I don't think so. Um, but anyway, you know, be that as it may, I can't see spending all that kind of money for, for movies anymore. And, and Snyder says to me, you know, when we do the movie reviews, well, have you gone to any movies lately? And I go, why? He says, well, there's so many good movies out there. I say, you get in for free. Why don't, why don't you pay to see these things? You'd probably think they were shittier than they are, than you think they are when you see them for free. That's the trouble with reviewers. They get to, they don't have to pay anything to see these fucking films. They don't have to, uh, uh, you know, so it doesn't cost them any money. But when you're plunking down the kind of money you and I would plunk down to go see a movie, we, we want to get our money's worth. And we don't want some the only person that can tell us whether it's good or bad being a guy who got in for free. Because he doesn't have the same investment we do. So where does this leave us? Well, it leaves us, I guess, with Trump still being an asshole. After all is said and done, it's, we're stuck with Trump still being an asshole. Uh, and is Eric Jr. going to testify? What's up with that, Alex? I think they want him to testify. By the he way, said I heard he that wasn't. on the news that it sounded like he says he's going to do it or something. Like, it's okay, I'll do it, you know. But oh. you know, there's no plans on that yet set, right, in stone? Well, they said he might. Yeah, somebody I said, think I just saw on the news it's going to be. He wants a limited interview, whatever oh, the hell right. that means. Mm -hmm. Well, what's limited? I don't know. He's doing it Trump style. Just don't ask me any questions I don't want to answer. Right. Yeah, or something close to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what's, what's amazing? You know what's amazing tonight? Uh, my, I've stayed in sync all night. In fact, this is my main camera. I'm not using the camera off of... Uh, uh, and and look, folks, I'm in sync when I talk. Yeah. I, I, I I have no idea why this goes out of sync. I have no idea. I haven't figured that one out, and I am not about ready to begin to do it. Um, Patrick, you happy? Sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, with the uh, with the tariffs, the price of wheelchairs might go up. Yeah. Are they made in China? I mean, this one cost me three grand as it was. So, yeah. You know, I mean, oh, that's now, uh, do you have a do you get a warranty or guarantee with that? Mm. Uh, yeah, for like a, a year, or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If defecting craftsmanship, things like that, right? Yeah, but the way that I abused the shit out of the chairs, um, they. I, they're pretty well built. I mean, um, I and I, I torture the shit out of them when I take them apart and put them together. So, you know yeah. what they should do? They should make wheelchairs out of the stuff they make those uh, Costco carts out of, because those things never go bad at all. <laughs> you know, uh, I I would love to get the titanium uh, chairs, <laughs> but those are super expensive. Really. Yeah. Oh, well. And they'd be a lot lighter than what I have now. And I have aluminum now, and it's still about 40 or 50 pounds for me to lift into the car. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, but I yeah. I can do it, so I'm not going to bitch. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. I just hope the price doesn't go up because of the tariffs. Yeah. But the price is going to go up on everything because of the tariffs, you know. Phil last night was saying, well, it's not going to affect me. <laughs> Just wait. Just wait. I know. <laughs> you I know. can't wait till it affects Phil. You know. Uh, you know you, you, how much is that pineapple? $80. You know, anyway. Uh, hey, that's it. That's our theme playing. Uh, you've been a great citizen panel, and we've had a nice time tonight. And I thank you all for having joined me. Sorry to the audience that I had to deal with some technical problems here and there. But overall, it worked out okay. And Hopefully, it will continue to work out okay as soon as I get that machine of mine back. Anyway, I want all of you guys, uh, uh, first of all, I want to thank Ray. I want to thank uh, 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 Charlie. I want to thank, uh, let me see here, who's next? Oh, Scott and Jeff and Charlene and Josh and uh, uh, Patrick and me. And all of you should probably give a big uh, round of applause. Uh, or, or no, excuse me, forget the applause. Just I'll wave at you, you wave at them, we'll wave all together. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just hang up on them. 
Uh, they're 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 gone. <laughs> well, I was looking at Patrick. He looked like he was trying to say Jeff's uh, uh, wife is uh, is uh, is nude again. Uh, no, because he was going. Rrr, rrr. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you to the audience for having put up with a little bit of this, which occasionally caused me problems, but we're, I think we're okay now. Anyway, um, next is The Intersection. Jack Bishop, uh, that is followed tomorrow night at uh, 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time with uh, the... Uh, uh, with with uh, Damian Chaplin and the exchange, and then I will be here at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>